Hi class, I wanted to talk a little more about NMR. I want to keep talking about NMR. Um, and I'll do a little more in class this week. But this NMR you have is relatively complex because it has some contaminants in it. So I wanted to show you what a typical NMR looks like. My pen is writing. I definitely need new markers. It's that time of year when everything's dry. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, you got to stand pretty close. Okay, so this is what I suggested. Okay, I said, first of all, use the peaks that are in your um, paper, because the paper has peaks in them, okay? Um, so, the first peak that's mentioned in the paper is a multiplet at around 4.2, and it's actually a very complex multiplet. And I was trying to introduce you to the idea of complexity in my last video on NMR, but I am going to talk about it a little in class because I think it needs a little more um, attention. On then it talks about a quartet, and I, and, you know, this quartet varies in size a little bit from spectrum to spectrum. That's probably a little on the large end of the, the spectrum, and about you know a little bit below that, maybe at 4.05. If my numbers are not perfect, do not get alarmed. I'm just going generally. This is what I see. And a lot of the spectra, I see a couple more quartets down this way, okay, of varying sizes. Some people have nothing, some people have two, two big ones. Um, these are like, I would say, around 3.5-ish. And again, very approximate. I'm being very approximate. Um, somewhere along the way here, um, there's like a singlet somewhere above three. This is not drawn to scale. Okay, around three-ish, maybe 3.4. This is not drawn to scale, okay? My order might be a little off. There's a lot of peaks in the spectrum. Then the next significant peaks come at around two, 2.2 or so. And they look like this. There's two doublets. Then it looks like there's a couple peaks in the middle like this. And then there's two other doublets out on the side like that. That's what it looks like to me in most spectra. Okay? Then there's another little peak. Then there's a big peak. And then there's a big messy thing at around one. This is not a, this is not a piece of artwork I've just drawn here. Okay? Very complicated looking spectrum. The only peaks that are relevant to your product are this peak, this peak, this complex splitting here and part of this. They're the only parts that are part of your spectrum, okay? So you're, what you were trying to make was this. Oh yeah, and then some people have like another kind of broad peak like that, okay? So you have to, I, as I said, you have to go through the paper and figure out what's what. This is relevant to your compound too. Okay, what's what here? Okay, now as I stated, so again, the only ones relevant to this, this is the OH. The OH can be anywhere, as I described in my last NMR, due to hydrogen bonding. So to, if your sample is more concentrated, you tend to have more hydrogen bonding, and the OH tends to be farther downfield or at higher PPM. If your sample is more dilute, it can be down in this region. So I saw a spectra where it was like buried down here. So where you see that broad singlet, that's probably your OH, okay? The NMR, the paper tells you what this is, the paper tells you what this is, the paper tells you what this is, and the paper tells you what some of that is, okay? What is the rest of this mess, okay? As I indicated, you need to look at the starting material, and I want you to spend most of your time on the NMR, not on the IR. The IR is interesting, but it's very simple. What kind of NMR would this give? You have to look at these hydrogens. You can actually look this up in the literature and get its spectrum. You don't have to just guess at where the peaks were, but one of the things that's important is you all have singlets that are in a three to two ratio. Okay, that's this and this, and again, I may not have them perfectly placed, okay? I want to point out also that a lot of people have acetone in their sample, and acetone's always just like around, I don't know, around 2.1 or so. Acetone is from rinsing the tubes. Now this is very messy looking. 
What are these other things from? I'm assuming, I haven't even looked these up yet. I'm, I'm leaving that to you. I'm assuming that people have diethyl ether in their sample and they have ethanol in their sample. But I think the only way you're gonna figure this out is by really looking up the spectra of those and seeing if there's any correlation here. So the problem we have in the sample is we have lots of CH2 groups that are next to CH3 groups that are also next to oxygen and that would put them down at a higher ppm. So I'm thinking that's what these quartets are. The methyl groups from all of these would be buried down here. All the methyl groups are down here, okay? All the methyl groups in the whole structure. Now again, so, that, so again, my suggestion is use the paper to find out what you're supposed to have, then use, then start thinking about probable contaminants, look up their NMRs and see if you have any of them. It's like a little detective project. I will reiterate this. I think I've written this several times, but I will reiterate it because a lot of people keep asking me this question. The areas on these are not going to be very useful because this is a highly contaminated sample. I don't care what your IR looks like. It's highly contaminated. And I tried on most of them to just integrate the relevant peaks, but in some of the spectra, everything's integrated, depending on who took the spectrum. I also tried to blow this up when I was running them with students. Now, let me get into the significance of that a little bit. Um, again, I want to talk about that. Uh-oh, I don't think it's going to fall. That's like about as nasty as the spectrum could look, I suppose. Remember, again, just stay there. Oh, hold it. Um, just remember again, it's all right. Just remember again, the OH, wow, think of all the work we've done on this board, huh? Um, just remember, the OH has peculiar behavior. One, because it's in chemical exchange, it's the neighbor that's not home, so it doesn't split. It usually looks like a bright singlet, and it has a variable position because of hydrogen bonding. If an OH is hydrogen bonding extensively, okay, the hydrogen gets pulled away from the shielding electrons and it experiences more of the big magnet. And when something experiences more of the big magnetic field, H0, it requires a higher frequency to flip the hydrogen. That's kind of basic NMR theory. Um, I might talk about that again in class because we're making another alcohol this week. We're doing another reduction in class, but more of an organic type reduction. Um, Again, I will say something else. I will repeat this. This week, what is due is your report. I gave a very specific outline as to how to do that report. I gave what my standards are as far as purity, yield, and identity. It's written very clearly there, I hope. If it's not, you can ask questions. For next week, you need to do that and finish this quiz. This quiz is really only like a 10 or 30 minute quiz. You, should, you have an hour, but it's 30 minutes. It's in the library if you're looking for it. Um, the other thing is um, you don't have to do the pre-lab for, for lab 14. I'll, we'll take this lab after break we'll, because you've had a lot of writing to do recently. It has a form that you follow. However, you do have to prepare it, all right? And I just put another version of this up. Has that version been corrected? Mm -hmm. You got rid of the bad one? Oh, I, I you have to get rid of the doc. Okay. Okay, it's the, it's the PDF version of it. Look at that. And I'm going to go over it tonight just to make sure it's good because I've been changing all these things as we go along. I'm about a week ahead of you guys this semester because I'm doing so much new chemistry. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk about this complex splitting again. All right? So, it's, so the thing is, again, it takes a little while to digest this, but these hydrogens are called diastereotopic hydrogens. I explained this on my last video. And on average, and this has to do with the fact that they're sitting next to an asymmetric carbon. So this means on average they see a different environment, okay? Now they're not split on this side because there's a carbonyl over there. So what I said was this hydrogen is splitting this hydrogen. It has a certain coupling constant. And this is called a geminal coupling constant. I'm almost done. Are you all right? Yeah. A gemmal, geminal cu coupling constant. And then it has two vicinal coupling constants. Now, vicinal coupling constants are usually about, I don't know, 10, like 8 to 12 hertz. Do you remember measuring coupling constants when you did the fumarase? Everybody remembers that fumarase reaction very well, which is great. That was about coupling constants. And coupling constants tell you about the interaction between the hydrogens, the, the magnetic interaction between the hydrogens. These are actually different, so they split each other. Now, geminal coupling constants are not 
of the same magnitude of vicinals. So geminals when they're right on the same carbon, like twins, and vicinals when they're on adjacent, okay? So this one is different from this one. So technically, when they're, they're like this and they don't all have the same value, you have to take the splittings individually. You don't lump everything together. So in the fall, we were just lumping all the hydrogens together. So in the fall, you would have said, oh, this H is next to two, so it'll be a triplet. Well, it's not gonna be a triplet because the magnitude of this interaction is so different from that interaction, okay? Or you might say, oh, this is split by this and this, right? So it's a, it's a triplet, but it's not a triplet. So what really happens, right, is HB, okay, is split by HA into a doublet of some kind, okay? And then HB is split by HC. I just realized a question somebody asked me today. All right, it's making more sense to me. And then HC, I just had this revelation while I was reading this. And then HC is split by, um, so HB is split by HA, and it's probably a smaller coupling. And then HB is split by HC, and it's probably a larger coupling, and you have to take them individually. Now, if these were exactly equal, it would look like a triplet. Think about that, this little tree that I drew. So the end product here is what it looks like. But you see what's happening here. I think I said it was a doublet of doublet of doublets, but it's just each one's a doublet of doublets. So then if I take HA, let me draw HA over here. So HA is kind of doing the same thing. So HA is being split by HB the same way. And then it's being split by H, HB in the, to this little coupling. And then the HC coupling is bigger. And it's like that. And what's happening, what I think is happening in the spectrum, the spectrum looks like this. It's got two little guys. Then it seems to have like four big guys in the middle. And then it has like two little guys on the outside. What I think is you're seeing some overlap of these two. So in other words, I think like two of these are overlapping in the middle, like perhaps these two are overlapping, and then you're seeing these on the outer edge. So I think these two, these two, these are just theoretical trees of what it would look like, but I think what you're seeing is, it's like you've got this, 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 and then this one's overlaying it, sort of like this, this, and then this, and this. And that's why you're getting that complex splitting. So I think you're seeing two doublets of doublets. To, so to correct myself, I think it was Beck who asked me this question, and I don't think I answered it right. I think you're seeing two doublets of doublets that are overlaying each other, and they're giving this pattern. It took, I had to look at that pattern for a while to understand it. But what you guys can do in your write-up, it says in the paper it's just a doublet, because they, they measured that spectrum 25 years ago, or 20, 30 years ago. So they ran on a much lower field instrument. It was probably 200 megahertz NMR. And we have a 400, we have a much better instrument. So we're seeing all this very complicated splitting. You could just call it a complex splitting because these are different. But I want you to start digesting the fact that hydrogens that are in molecules that are chiral, that are on the same carbon are not the same. And I, get, I tried to lead you into that idea by thinking about this as sort of like a pseudo ring, but it would be true regardless. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'll keep talking about it and maybe it'll start to, to sink in a little bit. Okay, so that's a little more about the spectrum. I hope it's useful to both the TAs and to the students. So I'll see you in class this week.